Hey everyone, Seawo Bowtie here with another episode of Super Mario Galaxy with special guest. Caleb. We're doing something a little differently now. We're gonna read a story with Rosalina in the library. By ourselves. Let's begin. It's not awkward. I mean, we're not official with Peach or anything, so it's okay, right? <laughs> Chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's not reading. Okay. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. <laughs> what? Sorry, nothing. What? Because <laughs> it's something that happens every day. This little girl just found a spaceship. Well, this was a long, long time ago. Okay. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Eliza. And I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet," said the Star Child, who had be been waiting days and nights. Pinky promise. Uh oh. Always the way to go. Don't worry. Oh gosh. Don't worry. I'll wait for you. The little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked. But she saw nothing. Hours turned into days, and then years. But still, the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. <laughs> but then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial, the celestial mother began. Thank you. <laughs> Chapter 2. Star Bits. This is just all going to be reading this book. <laughs> Days passed with no sight of a comet or a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known that it was going to take a this long, I, I, would, I would have packed more jam. The little girl above rumbled in her belly. Stop laughing. <laughs> Teeth. Oh, before they left, she had packed all this essentials telescope. Butterflies net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea. What was the bunny stuffed with? That's the important thing. Well, hopefully. Oh, see, I was thinking stuffing. I forgot to bring water. At 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 this, Luna burst into gl what? Into gales, gales of laughter. laughter, and the girl began to pout. Okay. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine. Said Luma. What? Uh, the little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing some this. Some star bits. <laughs> <laughs> Luma continued to laugh, and the little girl couldn't help but to join in. All right, maybe just a nibble. Gosh, the, the butterfly net came in handy. Winging out far of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits, and the girl's net... Oh, gosh. They almost fell out a few times. I was actually going to say, it looks like she's about to fall out and just go into <laughs> nothingness. But they kept on collecting. Luma! <laughs> the star bits tasted like honey. Surely that's not good for the human digestive system. For if it if it's actually honey, then yeah, honey's like. I mean, honey's fine, yeah, but like starve it. I don't know. Just because it tastes like honey doesn't mean it is honey. True. Okay, chapter three. Come. <laughs> Help us! <laughs> <laughs> the aliens inside. <laughs> A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was a morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise, turquoise blue, blue comet blue. shimmering at her. It's the sun! Ah! The little girl shook in the sleepy limo awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get the- Oh gosh, I'm doing the limo voice. We have to get the comet to- Gosh darn it, whatever. Can't do voices right now. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. 
Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, alert, utterly unable to take another step. Just face plants Look. in the snow. It's made of ice, not snow. Peering down on the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly knows clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty girl, huh? Find star bits in this. It's my specialty. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. <clears throat> Salima, beaming. There's ice here. Oh gosh. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I bet there's water here too. The two decide to stay on the comet for a while. Right Where's her room. parents in this? Like, I'm gonna are get they to just that. okay with her just leaving? She just left, but I'll get to who her parents are, possibly. Right in the Torco's comet, the pair continue their search for Luma's mother. I'm just riding the comet now. I hope I have all the chapters. Chapter 4, The Dreams. The Dream. The Dreams. <laughs> the Terrible Dream. Oh, here we go. One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked. Her mother retreating. Back? Gosh! Like, in the middle of yawning and sneezing, it's not good. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you. Like the sun in the day and moon in the night. She died. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains? And I can't see the sun or the moon. Her mother thought for another before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she woke, the girl's face was damped with tears. You have star fists in your eyes. Said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star pits. I'm crying because I've never seen my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry. Mama, I'm Mama. <laughs> you okay? The pair <laughs> traveled through the starry skies, <laughs> and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them <laughs> held Luma's mother. Luma was disappointed. I think that word is despondent. Oh, it is despondent. Crap. <laughs> I was like, it dis I was like, disappointed. Come on, it's perfect. But no, it's despondent. Dang it. Now, now, Luma. The, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said. Give him Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. Starman! Uh, <laughs> the girl closed her eyes. Mm. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. It just explodes. <laughs> Chapter 5. Home. The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said. Busily to herself, but put the gate here. Where is she? Where are they getting those materials? I just realized this. It's an ice plant. Where are they getting clay and... How? From the other comments, I suppose? Oh, true. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she's been bustling about at the at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. Hold on. <sighs> Getting choked up over there? No, I don't know what's going on. It turned out the starfish are the only the things... That that... <laughs> turned out the only things buried in the ice. Yep. There were tools and fur furniture, unlike any that they have ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. So that's where they got the materials. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Looking at the completed house, Luna re remarked, Don't you think it's awful big for just the two of us? With a library, a bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious, but still something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said, whistle, Whistle. wistfully. Indeed, the home was too large for just two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in a sleep starship. Chapter 6 Friends one day, 
While the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot colored planet appeared in the horizon. From the planet, another Luma with the same color emerged. It's not the same color, but okay. Do you, do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas very glee gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two, uh, the two Luma, mm, the two Lumas, neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama. At once, the apricot Luma. What? Parroted. Okay, that makes sense because uh, I read the rest. Parroted back. Mama, mama. Mama, mama. I just realized it's my mama. <laughs> Shush, don't. <laughs> the two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any signs of stopping. The girl was charmed by this adorable scene that she could not help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors. And they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all of these children? The Luma just stared blankly <laughs> as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new home, new house. Chapter 7, The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into this telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star pit. How strange! So far away, but... Feels so close. She twisted a knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could what, make is this out the Hubble. <laughs> until she could make out a gassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Yes, it's the Hubble telescope. <laughs> Zooming even closer, Terrence of the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on our home planet. She remember rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up to the hill to look at the stars. She remember how she and her brother would sled down the hill. She remember having picnics with her mother on the hill on bright and windy days. And. I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl busted. <laughs> the girl bursted into tears. <laughs> Shush. And the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house on by the hill. I want to see my mom, mother. The girl was shouting now. Her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because because. She's sleeping under that tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars, and a hush fell over the area. Do I not have all the chapters? She's just done. <laughs> um, well, let's see, how long did that take? Holy crap. That took 10 minutes. Well, I don't know if that's all the story. I would I think it's not, but I mean, I don't know. Cause I feel like seven chapters is a very weird number to stop on. But yeah, I think there's probably more. We just gotta find it. Yeah. Well, with that, I'm gonna stop the episode here because that's been ten minutes. And I mean, yeah, just a storybook episode. Yeah, just a nice, relaxing episode. No death, no dying. Well, I mean, there at the end, there was a little bit of death and dying. Shush. All right. Well, with that, thanks.